Hi everyone, welcome to Inking on the Fly with me, Amy Jasper. Hello, I am a Canadian Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I am here to share with you a fun fold card. Uh, this one is sometimes called a, um, a double zigzag fold, which I think is probably the, the web search that got me the most, um, the most hits, the most results. Uh, I think it's also could be called an accordion fold or a concertina fold card, but there are other card designs out there that have a similar name. So you just have to weed through some of those things if you want to try to find other samples of this design. Um, I have um, I have created my design using a piece, starting with a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. A lot of the other designs that you'll see online will be using a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock to begin with, or 12 by 12 patterned paper to begin with. Um, that makes some really nice tidy folds because you can fold every two inches. But because I am using, uh, starting with an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper, my finished card is going to be three and a half inches wide by, is it three and a half? Let me just double check. Yes, three and a half inches wide um, by five and a half tall. So a little bit smaller than the usual size of card uh, that we make, but I think it works. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how you can do this. So uh, feel free to pause the video as needed and um, yeah, stop the video, fast forward the video, watch it double time, watch it half time, whatever you need to do to be able to follow along and uh, make this card with me. Thanks for joining me. Okay, let's get started. So um, I have here a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Uh, I am going to trim it down. So it's going to become eight, oh, it is eight inches. I've already trimmed it down. Eight inches by 10 and a half inches. That is the, uh, our, our measurement for our paper to start with. And then I'm going to go and I am going to measure down two and a half inches from the top corner and two and a half inches from the bottom corner or, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. Let's do with my bottom corner because my ruler on my grid paper is right here. So two and a half inches from the top, two and a half inches from the bottom. So we've got our measurements um, there. And then before, I'm, so that's gonna be my cutting line. That's how I'm going to get my angled cut. But then we're going to uh, do some scoring on our paper as well. So before I actually cut that, it'd be good for me to do some scoring first. So I'm gonna bring over my paper trimmer. And if you have a kit for me, then the, the diagonal cut and the scoring has already been done for you. But because I'm sharing this video um, for all to see, <laughs> I, uh, I wanna be able to share with you how I made, what I, what I did for those markings. So I'm going to uh, do my score lines every one and three quarters of an inch. So one and three quarters is there. So make sure I'm using my scoring blade, which is the on mine, it's the lighter color. I usually use my Simply Scored tool, but um, for the sake of this video, it is easier to, um, to do it. <laughs> to use this one. I don't know why my brain doesn't work properly when I'm trying to tell you what I'm up to, but uh, so yeah, so I'm going to look at my markings, my, my score line markings on my cheat sheet here. So one and three quarters and then three and a half, three and a half, and then five and a quarter. And then seven, I have to open up my, 
my cutter all the way to get the rest of those markings. So seven inches and eight and three quarters of an inch. Okay, so those are really hard for you to see, but trust me, those score lines are in fact in place. Um, so then I can go and cut between those two markings that I made. So I can put, where do my markings go? So I have my one marking up there and my other one down here. So I can just go, whoops, what's happening? There we go. So I can go in and turn my paper into my, put it, uh, line it up in my um, paper trimmer so that you can see that my one marking is in the track there and my other marking is off the screen, but you can, it's, uh, trust me, it's there. So I can then cut along that line. Da -da -da. And then I have my two diagonal pieces with their score lines on there. So then I need to go, these are going to, these are the two pieces that are going to interconnect to create my accordion fold. Um, so the next thing I need to do is cut some, um, slits in my pieces. So you're going to cut these a little, each piece is a little bit different. So I've already, I've got some here to show you and to help me because I need to have them as my guide when I cut too. So, so if your pieces are sitting together this way, you'll see that I cut up from the bottom. So this is your 90 degree your squared bottom. So I cut up two and a half inches there, two inches in the middle and one and a half inches on the, the lower one. And these, these ones here did not get cut at all. They're just folded. But on the other piece, I need to do the opposite or go, come down from the top. So this side, I'm coming down from the diagonal side and I am all, and I'm coming down two and a half inches two inches and, or sorry, I'm actually going to the two and a half inch mark and going to the two inch mark and going to the one and a half inch mark. I'll now show you when I do that uh, with my, with my piece. Okay. So here we have my cutting paper cutter, paper trimmer again. So I'll start with my, my one piece. So you have how many score lines do we have? There's, you can't, I'm sure you can't see them because I can barely, see, oh, my light's gotten all wonky there. I can barely see them myself, um, but uh, they're there. So uh, this one, we're going to be cutting the second. So uh, first one we're cutting, second one we are not. Third one we are, second one we're not, or <laughs> fourth one we're not, and fifth one we are. So every second one. So two and a half inches. So when I put this in my cutting blade or cutting my paper trimmer, this one I'm going to come up, come down from the, the um, 90 degree, the squared off side. So I'm going to come down to two and a half, two and a half. So see, I've come down to the two and a half inch mark and then I'm going to skip one and go to the middle. And this one I'm going to cut to the two inch mark. And then this one, so I skip one and then I do this last score line. And that one I'm going to cut to one and a half inches. Like that. 
Okay, so then you have these, these cuts going up. So, but then I need to cut the other one and it's going to cut from the other direction. But I still need to put my paper in this way because if I put it in this way and cut down, oops, we're not gonna have the, the cuts going in the right direction. So we need it to go in this way, which means we have to slide the cutting blade up. So we can go to the same uh, markings. So we can go to one and a half, because this is, this is that shorter side. Then we're gonna skip, skip one, and we're going to the middle score line and we're gonna go to the two inch mark. And if you go a little bit over, that's okay. We're gonna skip one. We're gonna go to the last score mark. And this one is two and a half inches. Eh, plus a little bit. Okay. So now we have this one cut. So then we have our two pieces that have these, oops, put them the same way, that ha now have these diagonal, or these um, cuts in them, the slits. Um, so, so the sliding paper trimmer, I often get these ridges. I don't know if you can see that. Supposedly, if you don't press down too hard, if you have a light touch, you won't get those. I, I guess I just can't quite get the light enough touch because I always get those ridges. So I'm just going to press them down with my, my bone folder and smooth them out. They're just, it's like a burr and it's okay. It just doesn't look very, very finished to me. Okay. So now I have my two pieces. So then I can go ahead and I can uh, fold these. I just find it's a little easier to see what I'm doing if I fold them first. So I'm going to fold them opposite directions to each other. So whatever I do to this side, I'm going to do the opposite to this side. So this side's going to fold on this score line here and make sure it's lined up at the bottom. And then I can do the same to this one up here, opposite direction. Make sure it lines up at the bottom. Okay, so then we have those two. Now we want to fold this one behind. That's going to fold backwards, but we still want to make sure that it lines up. So then it looks like that, right? A little Z fold thing going on. And then the same with this one. We're going to fold making sure that our bottom is lining up. It's a lot easier to crease it when I just have the one layer. So I open up those, that other one, but that's just me. Okay, so now I have two similar pieces, but they're going the opposite direction and they're cuts. They have different cuts in them. So those have to slide in together. Now, um, when I did this class on Zoom um, in real time, uh, the question came up uh, if you could attach these pieces of designer series paper before putting it together. And you totally can. You just have to do some thinking about it. So um, because what happens is when these are put together, um, different sections are exposed and facing you uh, in different ways. So um, I don't know. I find it's for me, putting it together just helps me. You could put it together and then label all the spots uh, if that helps. Um, but whatever works for you, this is what works for me. Okay. So now we have our two parts. We need to slide them together. So these pieces, you can see the slits 
are going to tuck into each other. So you can, you can kind of slide those in together and they interlock that way. They don't really want to, so I have to work a little bit at it to make sure that they get into place without too much grumbling. Well, I might do some grumbling, but the paper won't grumble. If your paper grumbles, then that's a different problem that we have to, to uh, deal with. Okay. If you find that they don't go down all the way, like this one seems to, what's happening here? Come on, you. Uh, your slits, your slits just might be, not be cut far enough down. There, so now we have something that looks like that. And then you can, you should be able to just kind of squash it. There we go. See, and then we have our accordion card base, right? Pretty cool. And mine's wonky. Why are mine always going wonky? It did this to me before. So there is a little bit of wiggle. So you'll, you can see that there's that little bit of wiggle. So if yours is not lined up at the bottom, it's more than likely just because of that bit of a wiggle. So I should be able to straighten that out. It may be that, well, I was very careful about lining up everything. It may have to do with where my slits are, perhaps, perhaps, where my folds are. I'm not really sure. So if yours is a little bit wonky, you can join me in the Little Bit Wonky Club. That's where we are today. Okay, that's okay. So next thing we can do is we can um, put on a back piece and that will kind of help things to hold in position, hopefully. Again, I, I don't know, the wonkiness is bugging me. I don't know why it's wonky. It's honestly, it's probably my imperfect scoring. Okay. So then we can <clears throat> make it unwonky. And I'm gonna adhere the, the black piece to the back of my papers. So um, that's going to go on. I'm so, I'm still, I'm perplexed by my wonkiness. It was wonky in my, in my class as well. And I don't, I still don't know why it's wonky. It's, I'm sure it has to do with my scoring. Okay. Maybe we should score it after cutting the diagonal. Maybe because we scored from one end to the other, the scoring doesn't quite line up. That is possible. Okay. Anyways. We will do our best. So I'm going to attach the black to the back. Um, I'm still not perfectly loving the back of my card. I just put the black piece on the back to help stabilize it. And you have the option to um, put another piece of white paper or something on the back as well so that you have a writing space. Because yeah, it is, it's just, it's just wonky. <laughs> this is, this is just what happens, right? This is, this is the real world, my friends. Not everything does what we want it to do all the time. Okay. So this black piece is just stabilizing all the, the crew together. I kind of like the little hint of black that's exposed at the top. Um, and yeah, and then I can get a piece of white paper right on it and attach it to the back 
to, um, I guess, per a personal message that I'm sending out to whoever receives this card. Okay, so if you got a kit from me, then you will have all of the parts that you need. I've already done my fold, so I don't need that part. And I have a whole bunch of fun things in here. So, so I'm using the Peaceful Cabin Designer Series, the Specialty Designer Series, series paper. It's very, very pretty. So if you have a kit, you will have all of these pieces already cut. These pieces are cut there. Each of them is one and five eighths of an inch wide. I had to think about that. One and five eighths of an inch wide, but they're various heights. So in the description of this video, you will um, get all the measurements so that you can recreate this card uh, and not have to reinvent the wheel with all the measurements. So you're going to have two of each of the different patterns. Then you will also have a piece with some silver foil snowflakes, um, or you might have some of the trees on yours as well. This piece is cut, this is three and three eighths by two and three quarters. We'll put that one aside. Um, and then we have some die cuts. These are the, these are cut using the, um, I don't remember what it's called. Cabin dies, yes. So I, I use the cabin dies and I cut three different size trees, in, trees, <laughs> trees in the black glitter paper, which is, and this is also cut in the black glitter glitter paper. It's so fun. And it's actually paper on the back. And the glitter doesn't come off. Like, that's pretty cool. My daughter likes that. She hates glitter getting everywhere. So glitter that doesn't come off of things is much better. So I have three of each size tree. Black glitter, black, uh, basic black, and blushing bride. I have some blushing bride frayed ribbon and some baker's twine as well. Okay, so we want to put in all of our little bits of designer series paper, but we have, these are all angled pieces and our pieces here are all um, straight at the top. So we need to make them angled. So what we're going to do is go, th go and trim down each piece. So if you take um, each of your pieces and figure out which is the top, then you can measure just a half an inch from the top, and then you're going to cut from the one corner down to the half inch mark. And if you put them together with their partners, um, right sides together, then you can cut and cut them both at the same time. So if I was, you know, clever enough and on top of, on my game enough, I would have had all these pre-cut so that you didn't have to watch me pre-cut them, but we'll just have to do it together, right? So I am going to go ahead and cut all of my pieces and, and I'll probably pause the video or, or um, put a nice little break in the video Oops, that's the bottom. I want the top. Put a nice break in the video so that you guys don't have to watch. Watch me do this. <laughs> All right. Oops, right, wrong sides together or right sides together. Okay, so we've cut all of those. While we're at it, why don't we also do this front piece. This piece is, is meant to go on this front um, peaked kind of uh, area. So same thing, except we have to come in from both sides. So then you can measure on the back side, then you don't have to erase your pencil marks. Whoa! 
out. So we can measure one half of an inch from the bottom on the front and back, and then I need to find center. So if I look at my grid paper, and you can't see the numbers down here on my grid paper on my screen, but do, 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 it's about what center? Well, it's three and three eighths. Um, so if you measure just shy of one and three quarters, then you've got center. Yeah. So then we can measure, oh, that was silly. I put my center mark on the wrong side. So what did I say? Just shy of one and three quarters. So then I can cut, then you're going to cut this. You're going to meet your, your pencil marks and cut your gable your gabled top, if you will. All right, so then we just have to trim that. You could use scissors, but I, I like the paper trimmer because I do, I just know that then it's going to be straight. Okay, so then we have all of our pieces cut and And then we can carry on and, and stick them all together. So you can see that they go largest to smallest. So I can start at the back and I can adhere. So I'm going to, I'll just lay them on for you so you can see. So the, you've got the lar longest is going to go on the side at, on the side at the top. The next one is going to go on the inside and then they'll continue on down the line until you fill all of your spaces it's a little bit tricky to do those top ones if you um if you want to you have the option to, because you don't see more than just that top bit you could cut your pieces shorter and then be a little bit easier to tuck in because nobody can nobody's going to really see inside unless they are looking on purpose some people do some people look on purpose So then I can, I like using my Tombow liquid glue for this because then I can um, shift it into position. But because it's Tombow liquid glue, I also have to be particularly careful that I don't end up with adhesive where I don't want it. Because Tombow liquid glue, as you know, stays sticky when it's dry and so if it's not attached to something it's going to find something to attach to okay so i'm going to fast forward through this bit and you can pause the video if you like uh, or sorry pause the video yeah pause it pause the video if you need to so that you can carry on and fill in all your spaces. And then when I'm done mine, uh, the video will start again. Okay, so um, you can see that I have put all of my um, designer series paper pieces into my accordion card. And then I also put the front um, piece section on the card as well. I got a little bit of adhesive on here, but that's okay. It's, I think it's going to, yeah, it'll be covered up by my uh, cabin die when I put that on. And you'll also notice that this isn't all the way down. And that's okay because on the card, uh, the glitter cabin covers that up. So, so there we go. Okay. So then we can go ahead and take your cabin die and we're going to have to punch out all the little bits that didn't come through when I mass produced you know when I'm when I'm die cutting for a kit um, to send out uh, I'm not going to take the time to fussy fuss through every 
die <laughs> make sure as long as I know they've cut it's cut through all the way which I know this one has these ones have um, I'm not gonna pick out all the little pieces for you because that's silly you can do that I know you can so the glitter paper is just a little bit it's kind of sticky like not sticky but grabby just because of the glitter the glitter bits right so it um, doesn't want to come out it wants to stay So the cabin dies and the paper are available on my online store uh, or you can message me if you want to order them through me. And uh, they are, yeah, they're in the uh, Stampin' Up! July to December 2021 mini catalog. So they're only here till December, unless Stampin' Up! decides that they like them so much that they'll put them in, uh, that they'll carry over into the, the next catalog. But that's always a little bit sketchy and, and a little uncertain. So I don't like to wait. If I like something in the holiday catalogs, the, in the mini catalogs, I make sure that I grab it before it's gone. Okay, so here mine is all cleaned up. So I'm going to now go and grab my mini black dimensionals and I'm gonna put a bunch of, find some vacant spots on my die here and I'm gonna put the dimensionals on. And because they're minis, I can be fruit or um frivolous i guess and use many because every what three minis is the same as one of those large um one of the larger ones of the dimensionals so i don't feel like i'm being wasteful i just feel like i'm being thorough and i i i for one don't want my cabin to be kind of sagging in the middle or lifting somewhere or rolling or bubbling because I didn't put dimensionals in the right places. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really work that way, but sometimes if you have paper that um, has been heat set or, or if it, I mean, sometimes if you do a lot of coloring or if it's in the window, and it gets warm or humid where your cards are sometimes yeah you can get some parts of your card that droop or or uh, ripple a little bit okay that's my little my little explanation of why i like to use so many dimensionals <laughs> i just like using them they're fun they're like stickers okay so now we're gonna put our trees on we're almost we're, we're getting there this it's bit by bit right just be happy if you got the kit that you didn't have to do all the die cutting. Actually, it wasn't that bad. The die cutting wasn't too bad. I feel like I, I did all right by that. Okay, I'm using glue dots and I'm going to put one of my trees. The black, basic black die cut tree is going to go in the front of my cabin with glue dots. So cute. And then I will carry on with my others. And I have my other one that I did. So I'm going to just put use that as my guide for where to place my trees. So you can follow along or put them different places or find new trees. Oh, I put this on a different way than I did. Look at that. I didn't even realize I put these on as trees instead of the um, sparkly, like the foiled side. So yeah, you can use both sides. That's okay. So putting our 
Happy little trees. So happy. And some of them might not be straight and that's okay. I really like these little trees. They're pretty darn cute. If I quite like them. So make sure when you're putting your trees on that none of none of the embellishments go higher than the top of your card because if they go up past that it's not going to fit in an envelope very well. We can go out the sides a little bit because the card this card is only three and a half inches so we have quite a bit of space on the sides but we don't have a lot of space going up because the card is five and a half inches tall so um yeah so just make sure that your whatever you're embellishing with doesn't go up past the dimensions of your envelope that you're using And make sure that your glue dots aren't going to be exposed because you don't want your card to stick to the glue dots where you don't intend it to because then your card is not going to close properly or rather it will close but it won't open properly we don't want that I want that one on the little glue dots work really well. <laughs> there we go. Whew. I don't want that one the same height as the as the pink tree. I want it staggered. Okay, we're almost there. One more tree, and then we can do our our ribbon and our sentiment. Okay, so there is all of my trees are put on my um, my card. So I just need my sentiment and my ribbon. So we'll do that next. Keep those glue dots handy because they're going to be important. Okay, so for the sentiment, I have a piece of gray granite cardstock. It measure, measures one half of an inch by two and a half inches. So whatever stamp you have that fits on that uh, within those dimensions would work great. Uh, I am going to tie or banner one end and tie a Baker's twine around the other. So you want to make sure that you have, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure you have room to do that. And then I'm going to use one of the stamps from the Peaceful Cabin stamp set, but I'm only going to use the bottom part, the Peaceful Season, because that's what fits. If I use this whole stamp on my card, I'm going to lose, it's going to hide so much of my design, and I don't want that. So I only want to use that little bit. So I have found success. You could use um, your Stamparatus tool or a, or a placement tool. You could mask off what you don't want to use on the stamp, but I'm a lazy stamper. So this has worked for me so far. So I'm going to do it again. So I'm just inking up with tuxedo black memento ink. Only I only have to ink up what I'm using. So that's that bottom piece. And I am just going to lay my paper over top, lining it up with the, the of this part of the stamp so that it doesn't get of this on that part of those words on my paper. So I'm just going underneath and it helps me to know that I'm straight. If it doesn't work, then I'll cut another piece of paper and try again or flip it over and try again. Let's see what happens. Oh, every time, every time it has worked for me. Every time I think it might not this time and then it does. So, so there you go. That stamped really nicely. Okay, so what's next? We have ribbon. So I have a piece of 
the frayed ribbon and it is seven and a half inches long. So you can just fold that in half. Um, we're going to, oh yeah, we, we need to flag the end of our, our um, gray granite label. Words, I tell you, they are, they're very difficult. So I'm just going to flag the end uh, with my paper snips. Because it's quick, it's easy, they're here. I don't need to pull out anything, any other equipment. Just use what I have with it reach. This guy can stick to my ribbon with a couple of glue dots. So I'll make sure my ribbon is folded in half like that and then I can attach my sentiment with the ribbon and I could use another glue dot to hold the ribbon together but I'm just going to tie them together because I'm going to tie this anyways so it will hold those ribbons in place so I'm going to go ahead and tie my baker's twine measurements Amy measurements we have yeah, it's it's about ten and a half inches so about that that'll work a lot of times I just work off of the spool anyways but when I cut for a class then I need to cut the right amount so then I have to just figure out how how long it has to be So the trick with Baker's twine is to tie it quite loosely and then adjust the length before tying it tight because if you have to, oops, if you have to adjust it afterwards, then sliding it through a knot always makes it twist more than I like it to. I still have to make it shorter, I think. Hope that it doesn't twist. Yay. Okay. So there's our baker's twine. Loverly. I can trim the tails afterwards. I'm going to trim my ribbon though. So we'll just trim those at an angle. And then I can get my glue dots. Mm -hmm. and put the glue dots on the back sometimes glue dots on ribbon for whatever reason they don't want to work for me so let's do this let's take our I'll have my take your pick tool let's see if that can help me otherwise it's sticking to my fingers So I'll probably just use three, three glue dots to hold this ribbon in place. It doesn't want to behave with my take your pick tool either. There we go. All right, so then that guy can attach. I'm going to have him stick out a little bit on the side because I like that make sure those glue dots are secure and then we can trim our tails on our ribbon now that we have sort of an idea of our card parameters and then we have a beautiful sparkly wintry accordion fold card and I love that when it's on display uh, it just has so much depth to it so there we go and again if you want 
to have space to write on, then you can put a piece of basic white on the back and write on that. I find that if I, because this has so much bulk to it, if I um, write on a piece of paper first, on my basic white paper first, then I can glue it on. Then my, my writing's a little bit nicer that way. So there you have it. This is the uh, zigzag double double zigzag fold card. I don't know what I'm calling it yet. We'll see. <laughs>